Today I will talk about a fantastic visualization tool for rotations in four dimensions. Really great stuff. Welcome to Real Physics. You know that I'm not doing math for fun. I believe that this is of tremendous importance for our understanding of space and time. But uh, for today, let's just enjoy the math. I will talk about the three-dimensional unit sphere, or to use a little bit technical language, uh, also called S3 or even SU2, or I would prefer unit quaternions. And, uh, but I will not go into detail in explaining this because there is already excellent stuff on the internet. In particular, Grant Sanderson's channel 3 Blue 1 Brown and Ben Eater, I give you the links below. And so I highly recommend to go there and get a little bit familiar with it, but come back because there is news here too. If we talk about these mathematical objects, visualization and imagination and intuition is very important. And, uh, well, if you go one dimension lower, see this S2, mathematicians call this a two-dimensional unit sphere, you can note one thing. If you want to go from one point to another point on the S2, you just need two numbers. Longitudinal direction, and then go up in latitude and you arrive. That's all what a pilot needs to know, right? If you think about the entire S2, however, and you want to apply a general transformation, okay, that means an arbitrary rotation, it is clear that you have three degrees of freedom. Rotation in X direction, rotation around Y axis, and a rotation around the Z axis. Okay? You can do this with all everyday objects, like a book, X direction, Y direction, Z direction. Okay? So, uh, and this is called SO3. I told you about the rotations in usual space because the three dimensional unit sphere I'm going to talk about today seems something very abstract and hard to imagine. So, I was happy when I learned that this intricate object is almost the same thing than the rotations in 3 space. And here is where this beautiful simulation of Ben Eater comes in. And uh, if you look at this, you can make rotations in three-dimensional space just by doing different multiplications, like here around the x-axis, right? Or the y-axis, or even the z-axis. So this is the same sphere as before, but I will go to a slightly different representation and just show you one circle and another, another circle, which is represented as a line in the stereographic projection. And you observe the same thing. You can do this simple rotation by multiplying with this four-dimensional number. And you, you see that it's a sandwich multiplication from the left and from the right. So at the very end, the result is just a pure rotation. Okay? And uh, you can do this around the other axis too, you see, but it's always a, a rotation. Rotate also this one. Okay. Nice to observe this. So uh, it's very interesting that this works. And yes, by the way, you can do it in uh, two different versions. You can either uh, go up here or go down, or I show you the two uh, numbers minus, starting with minus one and plus one, it's just the same thing. So for every rotation in three space you have two different uh, unit quaternion numbers, but every different number gives you an actual rotation in three-dimensional space. So it's, well, it's just um, a nice correspondence and of course it's known to mathematicians for a long time. They call it uh, a double cover of SO3 and uh, also the computer folks are using this for uh, programming 
video games, but not our primary interest here. But the story is not finished here, and I'll tell you why. Now let's take a closer look on that multiplication and let's decouple the sandwich. That means I can make a single multiplication from the left and from the right and look what it does to these two circles. Okay, if I multiply from the left, you see the clockwise direction, but while the circle is turning clockwise, the green yellow line is pushed backwards. And at the same time, if I do the same multiplication from the right, uh, again a clockwise motion of the circle, but then the line is pulled to the right. That's very interesting because that means left multiplication and right multiplication introduce a different screw sense in this uh, space. And you may imagine it like wringing out a towel. I can do it by applying a clockwise torque. Okay, this is one possibility, but I can also apply a counterclockwise torque and ring it out and note this is independent of the direction in space. Okay, so we have a very interesting property here and uh, that means the multiplication uh, in, with unit quaternions has a much richer structure than just representing the ordinary rotations in three-dimensional space. Now let me get back to the analogy of the two-dimensional sphere where two numbers were sufficient to transform one point into another one. Instead you needed three degrees of freedom to rotate the entire thing. Now if you are considering the three-dimensional unit sphere it's indeed sufficient to do one single multiplication which is three numbers to transform one point to another, but if you want to rotate the entire thing, okay, to another state, you need six dimensions. Why? Because S3 is an embedded in four-dimensional space, and in four dimensions, rotations are defined by axes, and each axis is defined by a pair of directions, and you can have six pairs of directions in four dimensions. And uh, now let's uh, go again to Ben Eater's visualization and I add another circle or more circles. You know these straight lines are also representing circles in the stereographic projection and so actually I, I uh, pulled up every circle and now you can do uh, fantastic transformations. I can uh, apply a multiplication from the left, you know, introducing a screw sense here and then apply another multiplication from the right and also in this direction and you look at this object, it's just fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, this is indeed not only a visualization of the S3 and the unit quaternions, but it's a visualization of that six-dimensional manifold that rotates four-dimensional space, okay? Because simply you have got six numbers to play with here and you can play and play and play and every single combination is an element of this uh, rotation group which is called SO4 and well, mathematicians call this an isoclinic decomposition of SO4 by means of just mul uh, applying multiplications from the left and from the right with the unit quaternions. I think that uh, also Ben Eater is aware of this, but I think somehow he forgot to mention it. And that's why I made this video. Now I almost can't stop playing around with this stuff because it's really nice. You can apply all these six different rotations in four dimensional space and uh, you can add these uh, spheres for get a, even a better uh, visualization and you can look at it from different perspectives. But um, let me give uh, a brief explanation why this might be relevant for physics. 
the current paradigm states that we live in a Cartesian three-dimensional space R3 which means it's just straight and boring and the rotations or transformations of this space are the SO3 the rotations which is a three-dimensional manifold pretty limited for assigning a physical meaning to it however if the reality that surrounds us is instead a three-dimensional unit sphere and it might be pretty hard to detect the difference, then a natural set of transformations would be SO4, a six-dimensional thing. And this six-dimensional SO4 is a much richer structure if you think about assigning physical quantities. Well, that's all I wanted to tell you today. And uh, if you want to dig deeper into these questions, you have to read and study i give you the links below well if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like it and if you're interested in fundamental questions of physics subscribe to this channel